Hello, everybody, and welcome to a demo about WebGoat and dynamic application security testing. My name is Mirko Brandner, Solutions Architect at GitLab. If you are interested in securing your web apps and are particularly interested in dynamic application security testing or just eager to learn about it, then this video might be just right for you. Web apps often come with vulnerabilities which are introduced by the programmer. If you are in IT, you certainly have heard about cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and several other buzzwords. To make you familiar with the tech language used here, I do not want to use the lengthy term dynamic application security testing all the time, so I will abbreviate with just saying DAST, D-A-S-T, as in the title of this video. But let's get started. Therefore, I need to share my, my screen with you. Okay, here we go. So what is DAST? So DAS is a technology that scans a running application and exercises its various pages. If you want, it browses the application. So it does not look at the source code of an application like some other complementary technologies. These are out of focus for today. Rather think about DAS as treating the application as a black box. And depending on an app's features and user input, a vulnerable app can often be manipulated in tricky ways and retrieve data you're not supposed to see or even delete that data in the database, which is serving the application. Useful applications often require you to authenticate and log in. And then you're looking at the various pages and maybe fill in some forms, etc. This is where application security scanners, as demonstrated shortly, come into play. The scanner will pretty much do the same thing, log in uh, and browse through the app. The scanner will also provide some input to the forms and then checking for security flaws at the same time. Next step, what is WebGoat? So WebGoat is such a vulnerable app as just described. It was created to serve as a training application to study application security and learn about vulnerabilities. A famous list of the most often occurring vulnerabilities can be found in the OWASP top 10 list. In this demo, I will use GitLab's DAS scanner to reveal the existing weaknesses. But let's have a short look at WebGoat so we have a better picture of what we are going to check. By the way, WebGoat is written in a mixture of Java and JavaScript and uses an SQL database as the backend. So I'm going to log in here into this training app. And on the left side, you see, you know, there's a menu. Um, which is related to many of those lessons of this training app. And we want to go to SQL injection and refer to what I've been talking about just previously. So we're uh, directly going to uh, lecture 11, uh, and we're going to compromise the confidentiality with, um, with an input in our form here. So what is the scenario? So I'm an employee here, John Smith, and I'm working uh, in the marketing department. Uh, and I have limited access to my company's HR system to see my salary. So let me show you how much I earn. Okay, so here's my record. So do you think this is enough for a talented you know, individual like me. So you see, I'm pretty unsatisfied with what I earn and I want to know what my boss Bob Franco earns just to get a better idea of what I should negotiate as my next salary with him. I better not ask for more than he earns, but how can I find out what is appropriate? Well, I know most of our company acts are quick shots and security is something not heard of, but my nerdy teenage boy at home taught me through a few things in this web code training app. And even if I do not understand everything, I still want to give it a try and if I can see to hack the HR application. So let, let me show you how I'm going to manipulate the input and show you a trick with SQL injection. So I'm not going to explain all the details here because this would be uh, you know, the, the topic for uh, just another uh, video. But look at this tricky input. Okay. Oh, yes. I missed something here. Oops. Missed something again. 
Oh, yes. I'm a little bit confused. Sorry for that. So, yeah, that now should work. Okay. So here you see my boss, Bob Franco. Wow, he owns quite a bit more than I have. Okay. So this was part one of this video to show you what SQL injection can do. And uh, in the next step, I'm going to show you how to deal with that and how we can um, improve the security of this web application. So we're now here in the GitLab application and um, we're looking at the WebGoat project. In my case, it's called WebGoat ISAC. So you, you see all the files here and uh, okay, let's build the application and uh, have the desk scanner run. So the way to do that is I go and create a pipeline. Um, yes, run a pipeline manually here. Uh, and I'm going to use the few results branch. So I run the pipeline and the pipeline is created and you see um, there are four stages here and several jobs so the first one is to build the application to create a docker file then in the test stage we will have various um, static scanners which look at the source code which is not our topic but it's good practice um, to have them in a pipeline as well so um, the upper ones here they are for the javascript part and then spot box SAS is for the Java part. In the next stage, there's going to be uh, a push into the local container registry. And then in the DAS stage, um, the container is pulled from the container registry and the DAS scanner is run. So we can stop the running here because I've done several runs before. We don't need to wait. So let's look at this pipeline over here. Um, what you see here is a security tab, um, which is the results of all those scanners from the previous run. And what you see here, the DAS scanner has found 10 vulnerabilities and the SAS scanners, my God, they have found 2,500 and more um, vulnerabilities. So let's just look at the DAS um, vulnerabilities over here. And you see, um, not too exciting, uh, medium severity, low and in info, um, and there's nothing like the SQL injection that we have seen before. So what went wrong? Well, actually nothing went wrong. There's various ways to operate the DAS scanner. Um, and another, there's, there are certain ways, like different crawlers, which browse the app in, in different ways. And the standard setting is not helpful for the way um, WebGoat is actually programmed. So um, what I did, was um, change the parameters um, for the DAS scanner and uh, ran another pipeline earlier on. And what you see from this run, we can see we have a 109 vulnerabilities from the DAS scanner. And yes, all high severity, anti cross site request forgery, quite a bit. Um, let's see if we find the SQL injection. Oh yeah, okay. Here's quite a bit of those SQL injections. And remember, we did exercise 11, which happens to have a URL attack 10. Um, so there's a couple in this course, um, which is right. So let's look at the very first one in exercise 11. Um, okay, uh, here we see what the request was that the DAS scanner had used, um, the actual response. Um, the evidence for the SQL injection and an explanation or a solution um, that explains, you know, what to do. So uh, most SQL injections rely upon uh, bad validation of user input, uh, which means that the input is not really checked for. You saw that weird string that I entered. And what happened was a concatenation of these various uh, pieces, and it manipulated the SQL query, 
And that is how we got into, um, into the table of all salaries of all employees. So for the experts, let's take a closer look at what the what the pipeline definition looks like. So how we how we started the runner. Uh, let's use the web IDE for ease of use. Mm, let's open the YAML definition. Uh, here you find the four stages that you have seen um, in the picture before. Um, what we do here is we include the DAST, um, uh, uh, a, a DAST job that is uh, that comes as a standard. Um, so we don't have to write everything for running the scanner ourselves. Uh, it's part of what GitLab uh, calls auto DevOps templates. Then here's the build stage that builds um, the Java application. Um, and then there's the SaaS jobs that uh, do the analysis, analysis here. Um, the push is pushing the container as mentioned, and then the dust scan is taking place. Um, it gives various parameters here. Um, you see we had um, in order that this application works, you need to create a user to log in and um here i repeat the various um variables here don't be confused um there's something that i probably have done wrong but it's good for now um and yes and what you can see here is here's a setting um this is the setting for um the browser scan that's very um intensive that gave us those um a 109 vulnerabilities. If you leave them out and use the Ajax spider, um, that only found those 10 things. So a DAS scanner is, you have to understand a little bit um, how the application is written. And um, depending on what the application consists of, you have various options to run those scanners. And you can see you get can get different results. Um, another thing um, you might be interested in is what I did for ease of use. I defined this container as a service so that I didn't need to deploy it. Um, this is not the regular way to do it. it that usually goes into, um, let's say, a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, But here for um, the ease of a demo, I have just started is as a, uh, I have just started it as a service to the desk job. Yeah, which saves a little bit of resources and is uh, good enough for a demo like this. Uh, but in fact, you wanted to um, deploy that in your uh, in your staging environments. So that was uh, DAS and uh, WebCode. I hope you found this interesting. Um, Thanks for listening. Um, see you another time. Bye-bye.